What's up again everyone? A uh, really, really simple little dish, one of my favorites, tuna fish cakes. Doesn't sound too fancy, and it's not, um, but it's gonna be a really great way to turn potato and a tin of tuna into dinner for two or three people really easily. What I've done is I've actually boiled up a sort of medium-sized sweet potato. I've left the skin on because there's a lot of goodness in the skin, but very important, I've left it to steam and dry for about probably 10 minutes to the point where it's still warm, but not uh, completely, um, it's not, not wet anymore. So I'm gonna pop that in a bowl and just mash the hell out of it because we wanna get rid of most of those hunks of skin. But a lot of the fiber and a lot of the nutrients in a, a vegetable or a fruit are right below the skin. So really highly recommendable that if you're getting things like sweet potatoes, you just kind of give them a, a wipe with a cloth rather than washing them um, or peeling them. Next in, I'm gonna add in a tin of tuna, one of those uh, double tins that you get. This is Serena, it's upside down, but you can see it. It's one of my favorite brands because it's um, caught with uh, fishing line rather than like a big uh, trawler. So it's just one man, one line, one fish. So it's um, really nice and chunky. It's one of the best brands I think we've got to think about, you know, not just ourselves anymore in this world. That's going in there. Now we want to think about seasoning it and flavoring it. I'm going very simple, kind of like an English style. Pinch of salt to just to get through those sweet potatoes. Some chopped parsley. We talked about using the stalks in another video. Stalks are really, really full of nutrients. As long as you uh, chop them up finely, then it's a really no reason to not have them in your dish. So chop up your parsley nice and fine. This is one way you can really add in stuff as you wish and just play around with your own flavors. As long as the consistency of the fish cake stays pretty, pretty uh, consistent. Right, so I'm going in with my parsley. I'm going in with some uh, some Dijon mustard, which is really, really good flavoring. Once again, the things we're thinking about here, flavoring it without adding too many calories. Probably, like, I'm going to go with like a good two teaspoons of mustard because that's going to be like our main flavoring. And then I'm going to just give it a good solid mix around. Now, one thing, you can definitely add in some chili into this, or you can add in a little bit of grated cheese, that sort of thing. Just play around with it. But essentially, we're just trying to try and um, make it delicious. At this point, I would always gonna say, guys, just give your food a little taste, just to make sure that before we go into like the, the committed point of making fish cakes, we know it tastes good. It does taste good. Lemon zest, highly recommendable as well. But we'll put some lemon later on. So, that's pretty awesome. How fast is this already, right? So you can come home from work and just get your uh, sweet potatoes on the boil and then, you know, go and have a shower, come back, mash it up. I'm gonna go with a little bit of flour just to help bind it together. This is just plain white flour you to have in your cupboard, but um, you can also definitely use a gluten-free option if you wanted to. Um, and we're just gonna go to the point where it's starting to bind together and kind of come away from the bowl rather than be sticky because that means it's gonna be uh, you know, uh, easy to work with and easy to mold into fish cakes. So, because the beauty of this thing is that the fish and the potatoes are already cooked. So we don't wanna to put too much flour in, we don't wanna cook it for too long. Otherwise we'll get like floury flavor to it. So, that is the mix done. What's that, two minutes? Nice and easy, recommend now. A little dusting of flour on your board and a little dusting of flour on your hands. And then just take out, I'll show you how to do a couple quickly. A little, you know, small handful, two golf ball sizes. Should be able to get about six out of this. And then just put them into little rounds onto flour. Let's press it down slightly. Flip it over in the flour so it's coated nicely. And then what I'd also recommend is that you pop them, you know, you make your whole batch up. There's gonna be about six or eight in there. Make that up, just put it in the fridge for like 10, 15 minutes just to firm up a little bit. That means they're gonna cook a lot easier. And so we'll do that now quickly and then come back and cook them. 15 minutes later. All right, so we made our fish cakes. Now I'm just gonna fry them off in a pan. I've got a pan on, where's my olive oil gone, Sam? Here it is. We've got a pan on a kind of medium to high heat because when you're frying things, uh, you want there to be a good crust on there. 
Uh, if it's too low, you're going to soak up the oil. So you see we use an olive oil to fry it. If you use olive oil at a low temperature, that's when it's going to soak in and get greasy. At a high temperature, you're really going to absorb none of that oil. So you're getting very, very few calories from it because at the heat it's at, it will resist the outside of the, um, the batter or the, the flour coating and make it crispy but not absorb it. So I've got the oil in there. Got our lovely two fish cakes that have been lightly coated in flour. I'm just gonna put them into the oil. Like that. And because once again, it's already cooked everything inside, we just need to cook them for two, three minutes on either side just to make them crispy and get that lovely golden crust and then, and then we're all good. All right, two, three minutes on one side. Have a little look, nice and golden. Give it a flip. That's this part of the video done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they've been frying for two minutes on either side. You've got that lovely golden crust on both sides. What you can do is then take it, put it on some kitchen towel for like 30 seconds just to drain off the excess oil. Try not to drop them back in the pan if you make an instructional video. And then, you know, have that with a bit of that spicy yogurt we just made. A couple of your lovely fish cakes. Wedge your lemon. Come on, come on, done, <laughs> amazing.